Hey guys, quick update on our 2004 Mazda RX-8 uh, motor still in the car. I've actually uh, got a little bit of a head cold and injured myself a few weeks ago, so I've been in the garage a lot less frequently uh, than anticipated, but uh, don't worry, still looking forward to getting this thing out and rebuilt and probably back in the car sometime to mid to late June um, to get break-in done and uh, get back on the track. Uh, but the purpose of today's video is to actually discuss something that I'm pretty excited about, and it's something that I've always wanted to do um, with my uh, rotary engine rebuilds, and that's engine oil analysis. Uh, engine oil is, is sort of a hot topic for a lot of rotary guys, as well as obviously your normal traditional uh, combustion engine guys. But specifically with the rotary community, there's always been a lot of debate about the use of uh, synthetic versus non-synthetic or mineral-based engine oils, as well as the, the engine weight or the viscosity of the engine oil you should be using. Um, and, and really, you can ask 10 different rotary guys uh, what they use and you'll probably get 20 different answers. It, it, there, there's a lot of disparity out there about what engine oil is best to use. So something that I've always been interested in is engine oil data and doing engine oil analysis. Uh, and with the recent partnership with River City Synthetics and AMS Oil, uh, we're going to have an opportunity to do that. Uh, part of this, this new build and this new engine for my RX-8 is that I'm actually going to be converting over to a full synthetic uh, lineup of products, uh, everything from the uh, Dominator Racing engine oil f uh, for the motor, but also swapping over uh, the transmission, the differential, uh, and even cooling systems will all be getting uh, synthetic treatment. And this is something that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I see a lot of positive reasons to do so in the RX-8, um, and it's something that I think will, will prove beneficial long term. Uh, but in order to kind of give you guys actual real data or, or factual data back, uh, I'm going to be doing engine oil analysis. So I wanted to kind of take a second and discuss what that is um, and maybe just shed some light on the fact that it even exists. I mean, a lot, I talk to a lot of folks both in the racing world and just, you know, in the, in the normal daily driven world, and a lot of people don't even uh, do it or aren't even aware of what it is or what kind of benefits you can get from it. Uh, with engine oil analysis, uh, obviously the idea is uh, you take a sample of your engine oil, you send it off to a lab, they provide you uh, uh, quite a bit of data back on that engine oil. Uh, and you have some choices out there right now with, with uh, the labs you get to use. So uh, what you can do is actually you can use Blackstone. Uh, they're based out of uh, Indiana, I believe. And then there's also Oil Analyzers Incorporated, and they're based out of Utah. Uh, so you have these two labs that provide you the options uh, to do an engine oil analysis. Um, and right now with this engine, I know it's a failed motor, um, so I'm actually going to be using Blackstone uh, Lab and their kit for the engine analysis because Blackstone, it, it's a good product, uh, it's a good lab. Um, they provide you the information that I think I, I need to get out of this engine oil. Uh, but moving forward, Oil and Analyzers Incorporated actually provides you uh, quite a bit more detail and quite a bit more uh, options for the feedback you want to get out of your analysis. Um, so I, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with them. Um, reasons that folks do oil analysis uh, varies. You know, the, the racers like to see uh, what's going on inside their motor. Uh, you can detect premature failure, premature wear on your uh, friction parts. You can also determine whether or not your uh, engine oil is, is breaking down uh, appropriately. If it's breaking down too quickly, is it being overheated? Um, you know, those sorts of things that actually are very critical in a high performing engine. But you can also use engine oil analysis to, to simply determine uh, can you extend uh, your service intervals. Uh, a lot of uh, daily drivers, a lot of, um, you know, long haul truckers and diesel uh, techs will actually like to see whether they can extend the life of their engine oil, uh, you know, a few extra thousand miles. I mean, it can be a huge cost savings uh, over the course of a year or two. So it's one of those things that there's a lot of value in doing this. Um, but what I wanted to do is just, again, highlight engine oil analysis and kind of talk about uh, what you get from both Blackstone and Oil Analyzers Incorporated. Well, when you order a kit or you get a kit, they basically send you a uh, nice sealable uh, mail-proof container. Uh, this is just the shipment container. If you're going to send this through USPS or, or, or even really UPS, you, you're probably better off putting it in a box uh, just because they like to ship square items a little easier. Uh, but you get that. You also get a uh, sample container. This is uh, obviously full of my lovely, dirty, uh, failed engine oil already. Uh, but what this does, obviously, is it just allows you to capture the right amount of oil uh, for them to perform their analysis. Uh, and just for comparison's sake, this is the, uh, the one from Oil Analyzers Incorporated. You can see the bottles are, are, are fairly uh, identical. One thing I like about Oil Analyzers uh, is they actually provide you a fill line, um, and Blackstone kind of just lets you assume that that middle line is, is kind of where you're supposed to fill it. Just little details like that. Um, another difference in the two kits you'll see um, is this is the 
information sheet from Blackstone, and I'm sorry I won't be able to blow this up online, or at least on this video, but you know, you get that kind of report, it gives you some information. Um, the, the sheets you get from, from oil analyzers are obviously a lot more in depth. You have many pages, uh, you have a lot more information provided, a lot more uh, options given to, uh, to the consumer to see what kind of data you want to get back on your engine oil. So when you're, when you're taking the engine oil sample, one thing I just wanted to mention, because I just, I just had to go through this myself, um, it's great if you're doing it during a regular engine oil change interval, um, just like any other time you're changing your oil, get the oil up to temperature, it flows a lot better. Uh, but with this motor being failed, obviously I didn't have that choice or didn't have that option, uh, so it's okay to get it cold. But when you're doing that out of the drain plug, uh, it's best to get the middle oil don't get the oil that comes out of the drain plug first and don't get the engine oil that comes out of the drain plug last. You want to kind of capture that middle oil, so to speak. I think that gives you the best sample. Uh, another option, if you're not doing this as part of your regular oil change service intervals, uh, is you can actually get the pump kits and uh, withdraw the engine oil from the oil fill tube, um, which again is an option if, if you're not going to do it as part of your regular oil change intervals. Uh, so for my purposes, I'm going to be sending this failed engine oil off to Blackstone for an analysis. Uh, and then when I build the new motor, I'm actually going to send the uh, break-in engine oil uh, to Blackstone as well. But moving beyond that on all the future oil changes uh, and, and doing oil analysis, I'm actually going to go ahead and switch over to Oil Analyzers Incorporated. I, I just like the options they give me. Um, and I'll be able to provide you all uh, a side-by-side -side comparison as we move forward. Um, with the two different labs and two different options you have out there. I think regardless of which lab you end up using, I think it's best beneficial for you to actually do an analysis and just to see what, what's going on in your motor. You know, you might detect something that you can actually uh, repair or remedy uh, long before you actually have a catastrophic failure uh, in, in your engine. So the other aspect of this that I'm pretty excited about is I've got a few folks in the rotary community to also agree uh, to do similar oil analysis, uh, oil, anal <coughs> excuse me, oil analysis on their motor motor oil for me and we're actually going to do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, across a few different brands of engine oil as well as uh, a few different uses be it a, a, a Renesis motor like this one or per, perhaps a, uh, a, a larger tur single turbo uh, rotor engine you know the, a, a lot of heat uh, changes how the oil breaks down so we want to see um, both in the non-turbo and the turbo rotary engines what kind of analysis we get back uh, and post this information online I'm, I'm pretty excited you know there's a lot of information out there now there's a lot of debate and a lot of um, you know, opinions uh, and whether or not you actually uh, take away from any of this research something valuable, um, at least it'll be out there and, and I'll let you guys make your own decisions, um, but I'm pretty excited about it. So stay tuned. Uh, looking forward to getting that data out to you guys. Uh, and again, thanks to River City Synthetics for the opportunity to, you know, utilize these products um, and, and basically provide this kind of data back to the public. So thanks again, guys.